Good afternoon, everyone, near and far. Thank you for joining us today for a discussion titled Reshaping Riga's Landscape. My name is Matisse Kukainis, and I'm the chairman of the board of the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce in Latvia and a partner at Spiegels and Kukainis Law Firm. First of all, I would like to give the floor to the Norwegian ambassador in Latvia, Mr. Christian Odegaard. Ambassador. Good afternoon, dear friends. It's very nice to have this opportunity to, uh, to meet with the new mayor of Riga, Martin Stakis, and, um, and to hear about um, uh, your plans and vision for, uh, for Riga, as you have uh, now started uh, recently in your new very important uh, role and position. Um, as Norwegian ambassador to Riga, uh, I'm very proud and happy with the, uh, with the footprint uh, that uh, Norwegian companies and Norwegian uh, or Norway-related companies in Latvia um, represent. Um, also in Riga, we have uh, since the 1990s had a quite considerable presence of uh, Norwegian companies. Norwegian industry, Norwegian business, and uh, that is uh, maybe the most visible uh, footprint of Norway in Latvia and in Riga. Um, and I know that uh, the mayor also has a background from, uh, from uh, one of these companies. So uh, we are very happy to have a mayor in Riga with uh, Norwegian background. <laughs> um, we see uh, Norwegian companies and Norwegian business in Latvia as very important uh, uh, overall as, uh, as um, they employ a lot of people, uh, they uh, pay a lot of taxes, they contribute to welfare in, uh, in uh, Latvia and um, I'm sure they will also in the time to come uh, contribute to the development in Riga and to the to the growth in Riga. Uh, so um, uh, you can count on Norway as a partner in, uh, in the time to come, Mr. Mayor, and uh, we hope to develop uh, the very good relations with, uh, between Norway and Riga even further. With those words, again, welcome to this uh, online event, and we look forward to hearing more about uh, both Mayor's vision for, uh, for Riga and um, Norwegian and Norwegian Norway related companies uh, contributions so thank you thank you ambassador it is my great pleasure to welcome you to a discussion with the mayor of Riga Mr. Martin Statis who was elected earlier this year during an extraordinary city of Riga city council election on the platform to change the corporate governance culture in Riga and reshape Riga into an orderly, transparent, green, and people-friendly metropolis of Northern Europe. During the previous two terms, when together with other chambers of commerce, we organized a formal discussion with the mayor of Riga, uh, we experienced very last minute cancellations three times in a row. Thus, we are happy today that the mayor is here with us and uh, ready to join us in this discussion. Just to be clear, this was not with Mr. Stachis, this was with the former mayor. Uh, we will also be joined by some of the biggest Norwegian and other foreign investors in Latvia who are active in real estate development, commercial property management, and e-mobility to discuss the future development of the city of Riga to make it a more attractive place to live and work and to attract new and increase existing foreign investment. It is my pleasure to welcome our panelists and NCCL members, Mr. Frude Gronwald, CEO of Linstow Center Management, Mrs. Ilse Grasse Tibilde, General Manager of Moller Baltic Import, Mr. Alexis Carlsons, Managing Director of Omnium Properties 
and Mrs. Santa, Santa Rosenkopfer, Managing Director of CBRE Baltics. I, Matisse Kukainis, will be moderating today's event. Today's event could not have been possible without the support of the Norwegian Embassy, and I would like to thank the Embassy and the Ambassador Christian Odegaard for their long-term cooperation and support of this event. We also would like to thank all of our NCCL members who are the cornerstones of our chamber. If during the discussion you would like to raise any questions, please go to slido.com and enter the code 82811. It is a simple app. You don't need a profile. It's nothing complicated. You go to the website, enter the code, and you can uh, send us a question to ask the mayor. Without further ado, I warmly invite the mayor of Riga, Mr. Martin Statis, to present his vision for the city of Riga. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, and Mr. Ambassador, dear friends uh, and partners, hello everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to, today to be here and tell uh, about the work of the new term of the Riga City Council. So, um, yeah, I will take a small time of your, uh, to just to show my presentation about what are our priorities for the next few years. And, um, yeah, and then we can just discuss uh, all the questions uh, you uh, may uh, have. So may I please ask for the presentation? Thank you. So the, the first, I briefly just want to inform you about the big picture, if I may say so. Uh, so the uh, newly elected Riga City Council, we began our work on 2nd of October, so uh, only two months. And uh, this is coalition of the four political parties, and uh, all of those four political parties was either outside the Riga municipality or in opposition. So none of, of us has been in a, in a government of, uh, of municipality for the last 10 years. And this is the reason why we call our coalition the Riga Change Coalition. And uh, the, also our main goal is rapid, decisive, sustainable, modern change in Riga. And now in uh, this slide you can see our uh, Mm, uh, the list of our action plan we presented just after we made our coalition. Usually in municipalities in Latvia, we don't make an action plan. Uh, this is always done by government, but very seldom is done by, by municipality. But we decided that this is important to make some open plan, since the uh, good governance, uh, the open book policy, is one of our core values. So these are the eight, the most uh, uh, important areas of municipal responsibility. We'd like to do some changes. So good governance and cooperation, education, mobility and infrastructure, the urban environment, culture, protecting of the environment, housing, social issues, economy, and business. And as I said, this is publicly available planned and uh, we will work on this plan uh, uh, continuously because, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is something that was made within just a few weeks just to understand are we all four political parties on the same page or not. Uh, but uh, first, uh, as, even though that this is the... Uh, priorities of our coalition, I would like to maybe start with my own priorities. And uh, the first priority is the competitiveness of the city. Uh, and here's, uh, here are the um, yeah, uh, main uh, elements of intense work is attraction of investments. And it means direct contact with the mayor in uh, Riga Investors. It means listening what investors say understand uh, and take into account their needs. And for that we need a new platform, and uh, this is the one of my first reorganization, is to create a Riga Investment uh, Agency, 
which will start work as soon as possible. Um, this was my promise before election, and this is, that's one of the reasons why uh, we started this uh, uh, investment uh, agency in the first place. The second priority is a traffic infrastructure, which also has been neglected. We would be the arrangement of the transport infrastructure as well as its modernization and adoption to today's challenges for the 21st century. So what we can see now that the, our behavior and uh, the way we uh, travel from one place to another has been changed rapidly last 10 years. Um, I was the first one who launched the, the bike parking at my cafe uh, 10 years ago, and this was something... Uh, new for Riga, and uh, now it's 10 years has been passed and everybody is uh, driving bicycles over days. Five years ago there was no uh, bicycle, uh, no uh, electric scooters in Riga and what we see today that people uh, choose to drive scooters day by day, but the infrastructure of the city has remained about the same as this was planned in 1960s, 1970s, so we need to catch up this situation and offer the, the new, new plan. It means roads without the pothless. It means prioritizing pedestrians, public transport and cycling infrastructure. New planning principles that everybody in the city had the space. And uh, yeah, as I said, I want to end the silent war between the cars, the bicyclists and... and, and um, and, and the pedestrians, that every one of these groups had a space in, in, in town. And it's not the easy thing to do. As you know, a uh, few weeks ago, there was made a reconstruction of the, one of the main streets in Riga. Unfortunately, the uh, planning of this work and this, this is a new reality. Uh, people voted for the parties who said, yes, we want to bicycle roads, the bike lines in the city, and uh, that's what we do. And of course, Rail Baltic Task Force. So Rail Baltic will be the biggest project in the next 10 years in, in Riga. And I remember that in February um, this year, it was the first meeting in the Riga municipality about what we were going to do with the Rail Baltic. There was the meeting with NGOs, with the um, municipality. The, the, in that time, it was... Um, uh, other mayor, uh, Oleg Burovs. So this was the first meeting when they started just to think what this project will look like. And I said, oh my God, we are not ready for that. Um, so what we will start with is uh, to create the new uh, Rebaltic Task Force who will work only for this project. The good governance. Um, we know why the previous uh, administration was uh, sent home <laughs> and uh, the reason was corruption and uh, the reason was a bad style of governance, let me call it that. So what we want to do, we want to implement this OSC, OSCD governance principles in the municipal companies in the first place as well as uh, in the management of Riga City Council. And uh, the first thing what we know working uh, for is to, uh, to ask the simple question, what we want from uh, municipal companies and sign with them the owner's expectation letter uh, to say very clearly what we would like to achieve. And this uh, letter will be publicly uh, available as well. And also we will start the uh, form of advisory council of NGOs uh, where will be representatives for all the neighborhoods and uh, also the other NGOs like, um, uh, like could be also the trade organizations as well. And my belief is, my belief is that uh, the 60 council deputies or members who are in the governance cannot represent 600 people of the Riga city. And the best way to understand what really people want, the management of the Riga city, my administration, has uh, started a couple of reorganizations. 
The first organization, what I already introduced you, is the establishment of Riga Investment and Tourism Agency. We already have an agency called Riga Tourism Development Bureau, which uh, made the work very well, I think, and I think the number of tourists uh, in the previous period was only increasing. We don't want to lose that. We just want to thank this. But what I want to add is the capacity also to attract the investment, investment and the business uh, tourism. So this is a new direction and phase of uh, the attraction of investments. And uh, yeah, my objective, of course, is the city that is open to international business that competes with uh, Tallinn, with Vilnius and other surrounding capital uh, cities. So this new agency will start work in, uh, I believe, in January. And uh, during this period, there'll be the both the Riga Tourism Development Bureau and the new investment agency. And then uh, from the Tourism Bureau, uh, all the capacity will be moved to this um, new uh, agency. And for me, it's Im uh, important that this agency will work under my supervision uh, because I want to be the person who meets uh, the investors personally, as I already uh, uh, have uh, done uh, last um, um, weeks and months, uh, meet investment in personal like uh, Norwegian Air. The second reorganization is the transformation of executive boards of the Riga city districts and suburbs. Um, I don't like how the city is organized now. We have uh, three organizations who, um, uh, yeah, who, uh, who um, run city let's say, daily life and do it in, F in, in quite different manner and not, uh, uh, not very efficient, I shall say. And my goal is that I want to be closer to, the, to the, those who live in the Riga. We want a clear system without overlapping functions. And we want, to, we want a digitalization of our services and many, many other things uh, to do. The very important organization is the organization of city development department. And uh, the, in my meetings with, uh, sorry, yeah, the, when I meet investors in Latvia and when I ask them what are the uh, main problems in, in, in a Riga municipality, they always say it's uh, uh, the problem with um, Riga. Uh, uh, construction board in Latvia it's called Buwald. I um, hope it, I have translated it the correct way. And uh, that the projects, what investors are planning to do in Riga, moving forward very, very slowly versus Tallinn and Riga. So this is something we need to change as soon as possible. That is why this incorporation of the construction board and Riga architect's office, there's three uh, different departments now, development department, the construction board and Riga architecture office. I want to make them in the one structure in order to, uh, to, to uh, increase the speed of all those uh, processes. And I'm very happy that the first thing what we already have done, what was open last week, is the uh, green corridor for the big investments, uh, investors. Uh, we have started this uh, last week. Then another or other organization is uh, changing the focus for actions of the center of combating bureaucracy, see, uh, corruptes, uh, bureaucraties, upcorrosion centers. Uh, I don't see the, uh, the bureaucracy is always is a problem in, uh, in a municipality and, in, and also in a government. This is, I think, not only in Latvia, but in all countries in the world. But I think the best, thing, best uh, way to fight bureaucracy is uh, digitalization. But if you want to fight corruption, this is something you need to uh, uh, act in a totally different manner. That's why we, I want to change this uh, um, uh, center of combating bureaucracy to transfer it to center for combating corruption. And uh, 
This new center will, indif in, uh, will indicate, uh, in identificate the corruption risks, carrying out the inspections and identify the violations, and also whistleblowing system, which I believe is very important for, for, for us as the city. I believe the many, mis many problems that have been done in the last 10 years uh, could be avoided if people would f feel free to inform about them. And uh, yeah, this whistleblowing system have to work very efficient. Um, the law of, uh, doesn't say that uh, the executive director of Riga municipality um, needs to be fine in, a, in, a, in the best OECD uh, traditions, but we decided that we will do so. And uh, we know we, we are in the process uh, to find a new executive director in city of Riga. This executive director is a number two person in, in the municipality, especially starting on the 1st January 2020, from, from this year, because all the municipality companies are now reporting to the uh, executive director, not to the mayor of the city. <clears throat> then the uh, executive director works with the, uh, with the councils and the boards and so on and so on. So this is a very, uh, this is a very, very important person, and I want to find the best person for this position, and that's why I believe that this open competition with uh, independent observers who will help me to find this person is very important. We also have been in, 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 uh, involved uh, in a uh, professional requirement company in order to headhunt the best person for, 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 for this position. And um, they are very um, professional and representative uh, commission of nominees uh, from the president's office, uh, from the Ministry of Justice, uh, and other uh, very uh, respectable organizations. And also, the one uh, professor from, uh, from NGO uh, who works on Providus, who will be the one who will be like observer, just to see that this process is made transparent, uh, fair, and, and um, yeah, and independent. So by the way, uh, you can apply to this uh, till 11 of December, so you still have the time for that if you want to change your a position to the executive director of the city of the Riga. So my challenges for in the next few months are, are quite um, big challenges, I may say. Recovery and resilience uh, facility. Uh, there is a huge public investment available now in Europe. And my biggest surprise and also regret when I started uh, work in municipality, there was almost no projects. We can go and say, okay, we want to get some part of this money uh, and invest in, in, in Riga. This recovery and resilience fund is, is 1.7 billion, and of course, Riga would like to take some share of it. Uh, and we made, uh, the government gave us four weeks to make a plan what we would like to have from recovery and resilience fund and we did it, and our, our two main uh, focus are on Riga and its surroundings. Mobility program, the public transport, link uh, the uh, public transport with the railway, the new type of public transport with a new type of uh, engines who works on uh, other fuel uh, to reduce the carbon like uh, electricity, of course, like uh, 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 hydrogen and, and so on, and digitalization. Uh, the uh, Riga municipality, as well as other municipalities in Latvia, works on really old and old-fashioned uh, IT systems. Uh, our main tool, uh, where all the documents are, uh, the, our, the program, what we are working with day by day is, is made on 2003, so it's almost 20 years old and nothing has been done to, to, uh, um, yeah, to, to, to digitalize the, the municipality. And this is, uh, there are about 150 millions available in Re Zealand's recovery fund 
and uh, my um, ambition is to to take at least one third of this money to invest in uh, Riga to digitalize uh, all the our systems. Then the, the next challenge is the budget. Uh, budget is always challenge, but uh, the the biggest challenge is for this year is is reduced uh, budget. So Riga so far till 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 the uh, till till today received the 80 percent of uh, income tax uh, from salaries, uh, 80 percent. So fasting from 1st January next year, it's 75 percent, which is about 42 million in total drop on income for the Riga municipality budget. Uh, and this is challenging for everything what we have promised to our voters, what we would like to do, we need to start our work with a very, very um, challenged budget. And from my side, I have set up the three priorities. We will increase budget, even though that budget is going down uh, for next year. And these three priorities are the social security, uh, as uh, access to the preschool education and quality in preschool, in kindergartens, as well as in the schools, and uh, completion of uh, ongoing infrastructural projects and designs of new ones. I think each of you who has been in traffic jams next to the Riga bridges do understand why I'm t what I am talking about. We need to finish this. Uh, infrastructure projects as soon as possible and for that of course we need some um, additional investment. So these are my three budget, budget priorities. Unfortunately for other priorities we actually we need to find saving and uh, I think the um, um, total budget will have been going down for those uh, priorities. That's why we need to set up what are our priorities. And, of course, the COVID-19 situation, everything are familiar with that. It's, of course, an uncertain economic situation. Nobody knows what will be the income for the next year, and uh, as well as a municipality, as also economic will probably go down or maybe go up. Uh, we don't know that. And uh, responding to the changing epidemiological situation. Uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> Every Monday I start with that, where I call all the group of uh, all the responsible organizations just to understand what is the situation in the city, what the government has been decided, and what we do to follow these uh, restrictions. Uh, for instance, uh, for now, the government has been decided that there should be three square meters for every uh, pupil who, uh, who is studying in a school. So now I need to recalculate all... Uh, the space in all my 108 schools in Riga and, and, and to understand what, I do, what, what we do with this situation. So this is the challenging time also for, for, this, uh, for this situation. Well, that was very short about my program for the next five years as well as my program for next couple of months and next year, of course. The next year, 2029, will be e year of the bad news. We will do a lot of organizations, uh, many changes will be done in, 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 in municipality, in the companies of municipality, but I think this is the best timing to do those minor changes uh, in, in the municipality next year in order to start a new life and a new growth in 2022. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mayor. And now I would like to remind everyone about Slido. You can post your questions to slido.com by entering the code 82811. And now we will hear from the private sector and, and have our panelists address their concerns and offer their questions to the mayor. First, we will have Frude Gronwald, the CEO of Linstow Center Management, uh, address his concerns and offer his question to the mayor. Frude? Well, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you for the inv invitation. Um, Linstow is a um, Norwegian real estate uh, 
the development company. Uh, we've been active in Riga for um, uh, more than 20 years. Uh, mainly we have invested into shopping centers and uh, hotels, but we're also now uh, looking into um, investing into other property segments. And we have been here uh, a long time already, and we do have uh, plans to stay and continue to invest uh, if the business environment uh, allows us to do that. I thought about uh, 20 years back in time um, and uh, where we actually took the initiative at that time to, inv to uh, invite um, the famous uh, city uh, uh, architect uh, Jan Gehl. So we <clears throat> took him to Riga at that time to, to look into some of the projects which we, we had at the time. One was uh, the Origo development where we wanted him to do an analysis of, uh, of this whole area and how to improve it. Uh, we also produced a uh, recommendation uh, together with uh, IFC, which we handed over to the city, which was um, urban uh, design guidelines for how to develop uh, Riga city. Ayan he has been working all over the world and very successfully so, uh, in particular is uh, his own home city, Copenhagen. His focus is really on um, uh, how to create uh, quality space for uh, for people and how to make people thrive uh, in cities and make use of uh, of their cities in particular the central part of the city so he's uh, he is looking a lot into uh, how to move people in particular and he has uh, always said that uh, pedestrians should always be prioritized uh, ahead of cars um, and it's very important to create easy communication within a city for uh, all types of communication, but maybe in particular for pedestrians and uh, and bicycling, which he has done in, in Copenhagen with very big success. Um, he's very concerned about opening up the city for uh, inhabitants, meaning that all the ground space, most all areas of the city should be made accessible and, 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 uh, and open for people, including all ground levels, for example, of all uh, real estate that should be accessible for people. And he's also very concerned about uh, creating social and, uh, and, and economic uh, activities in the city, um, opening up uh, for social life, creating cultural activities, including uh, squares, uh, benches, and all type of infrastructure that makes people spend time in the city. And I think the very uh, inspiring thing about uh, uh, the works which you've been doing with Jan Gehl and what I've been listening to from his side also, is how these relatively simple principles um, increases value of real estate in a city. And when the value of the real estate is increased, that opens up for more real estate investments in the city. And it also increases value for, um, for the municipality in terms of uh, more economic activities and, and tax income and, uh, and so forth. Um, so um, I think many of his principles uh, should be followed also uh, for Riga City and Riga City has great opportunities to, to continue to, to develop already uh, what has happened the last 20 years and to create a more attractive city. And one very specific, specific uh, thing that I think that um, uh, I, I would like to pinpoint is that uh, on the backdrop of um, the Rail Baltica uh, development, many of these principles can be implemented. And I uh, think that the city should really take an active approach to uh, say capitalize or, or, or leverage on what's, what's going to happen around um, the railway station going forward. Um, Riga has a big challenge in that the city is sort of divided into two parts, the part which is sort of the expensive part and the part which is not developed. And, um, and that is because of the embankment, which is now going to be reopened during the reconstruction of the railway area. And I really think it's important for uh, the city to try to, to find ways of uh, improving the landscape around the railway, which is not directly connected to the Rail Baltica project. Uh, but which is controlled by the city. Um, and more specifically, which was also advised by Jan Gehl at the time we had him here, was to try to create more of a, 
boulevard out of the 13th of January Street, uh, reduce the, the traffic, um, make it more into a green uh, space, and create more room for pedestrian connection between the two sides of the city. And this is really an opportunity I think the city should um, use to the maximum to create much better interaction between the two parts of the city and to create possibilities to also um, uh, invest more uh, into that part of the city, which hasn't been really interesting for most developers till now. I think also uh, to develop the, the, the front. Yeah. Uh, I would just like to give the mayor a chance to comment. Mayor, have you okay. heard about those principles that Trude spoke of? And are there any ideas to implement these types of principles in the city of Riga? Well, Mr. Gale has been inspired not only you, food, but also me, myself, and uh, many members of my political party and also my partners in the coalition. And I think you can find many of his ideas and into the, our program. And um, yeah. my dream would be that uh, uh, 13 Yanbara Street uh, would be pedestrian street with nice cafes and we can use the Riverside Array and so on. But of course, so far it's only uh, just a dream. Uh, regarding the Rail Baltic, uh, we're now currently very actively working on a plan and, um, how to prevent that Rail Baltic divides city uh, and works as a barrier uh, who divides the city in, in order to, to connect the city. And we don't really want to avoid that this will disconnect the parts of the city from each other. Uh, for, for that reason, of course, you need some capacity. You need some people who are working on these technical documents and uh, who is designing those. So, f so far, uh, I think we have achieved at least that the, the access points between these two cities will be actually, in, in new projects, will be more than it's, it, than it's now in our railway city. And, and uh, this is good, but of course, this is not enough. Um, yeah, well. If uh, the, the biggest pro problem that Freya Baltic has, has uh, pointed uh, when we had the first meeting, just a couple of weeks when I started, my, my administration started to work, that Riga wasn't the, the partner uh, in this project. There was no one who, to, <laughs> to whom they could talk uh, uh, with this. So that's why uh, our first thing uh, and the first uh, one of the yeah is, is it was to create the department of the of the people who who will be this, just a counter person for them who can continue the work. Uh, the Rail Baltic is the challenge, and this is also opportunity for Riga, and uh, they will build a bridge uh, between the two parts of the uh, city across the, the river Daugava, which for, for pedestrians and for, for for cyclists. This is the good news. Um, of course, we look on the Riga Central Station as a sustainable uh, Baltic mobility hub uh, to, uh, to build, uh, uh, because this is the face of Riga, obviously, and uh, not only Riga, but also Latvia. And uh, this Riga Mobility Vision also did a concept design for the station square and its surrounding area, proposing the transform into vibrant public space with the bike parking lots and, and, and so on and so on. Um, the, 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 the money, as always, will be the, the biggest issue, but we, we, we have made the three plans, the plan minimum, which is actually not acceptable for me, which is only 36 million to invest in this. And uh, we go from the, the op, um, let's say, uh, optimum is, is about 86, and the, the maximum is 100, uh, I think, 86. Uh, we go for this plan maximum, maximum, and we. I hope that we can gain some some investments as well uh, in, in, in this uh, resilience and recovery f from Brazilian recovery funds. We don't have uh, the answer yet. The answer will be only on February, but hopefully there will be also some uh, some good uh, news. But I think the the the, the most thing from for the Baltic is that at least. Riga uh, will not be only the ones who is just looking what is happening and, and, and this project lives their own life, but we want to be an active player, uh, and that's, that's my target. And, and Frude, do you have a quick follow-up question, because we have to move on to the next panelists? Yeah. I'm really happy to, to hear that, because that is what we feel has been missing for a long time there, the city's active involvement in something which we think is a great potential. And just a, just a last uh, few comments there. I think that um, 
uh, it's a complicated issue, but uh, if we could together resolve this question about the expropriation of uh, this uh, building in front of the railway, which is totally blocking and destroying the view to the really nice, beautiful new railway station, um, I would be ready to sit down and um, discuss ideas with you. <laughs> Thank you, Frude. Thank and now we will go to our next panelist, Ilze Grasse-Tibelde. She's the general manager at Moeller Baltic Import. Ilze, can you keep your uh, overview to one to two minutes and then uh, continue with your questions? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, hello. First of all, Mr. Statis, my congratulations to you. We are very happy to have you in your position and really looking forward to a good uh, cooperation also in e-mobility. Uh, I'm representing Volkswagen and Audi. We are having Volkswagen passenger, Volkswagen commercial vehicles and Audi in Baltic states and being a part of Norwegian company Möller Mobility Group. Um, so we have prepared a few questions regarding e-mobility in Riga city. And uh, the first question will be also an example from Oslo. Uh, several cities have chosen to improve the inhabitant life by setting limitations to enter specific areas or even the whole city for vehicles with high pollution. And uh, as I mentioned, the Nox Oslo example uh, shows it, for example, when they have uh, days with acu accurate levels of air pollution, quite high levels of air pollution, there is a, there is a temporary prohibition to use uh, it for, uh, for example, diesel cars. And uh, there are several European cities, you can see same, uh, same examples in Germany, in France, in Barcelona, in Spain, for example, and so on. So, question about Riga is, uh, have you had discussions on actually thinking about limiting usage of a uh, city center for uh, highly polluting transport? And with this pretty much uh, focusing on the zero emissions. And uh, I've heard, and I also have heard from our uh, president of uh, Latvia saying that we as the Riga city, we want to show an example to the Baltic states. Uh, can you please comment uh, on this? You know, before elections, uh, I had a chance to visit all the departments and uh, municipal companies, and I asked them the same question. So what are your long-term targets? Where are we going to? And I understood that they, actually we don't have that target anymore or we have lost it. So my target is that Riga should become the, one of the first uh, climate-neutral cities, in, uh, in, in, at least in Baltics. And today we had a meeting how to uh, became the members of the 100 Korean natural cities, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, which is um, run by the Europe. We have very high ambitions, uh, because as high as your ambition is to reduce the CO2 and the carbon, as uh, your uh, possibilities to, to get some funds from RRF is, is actually increasing. And this is something what we'd like to do, to, to do. Yes, our aim is to develop Riga into an even more livable and also walkable uh, city. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And uh, to do that, uh, the, my plan is uh, first to, to, to start to work with a pilot project, uh, experiments, the wise experiments, just to understand what's, yeah, what are the Riga approach to this. Uh, and uh, I want to emphasize that we want to be smart about that. We have to uh, do the experiments, evaluate the, the results, see what, uh, what people who live in, in these areas think about that and find our own approach. What I do believe that Riga has a, uh, the best uh, position or best possibilities to become, become the first climate neutral city. And there's three main parts we need to work with. One is the housing because housing um, uh, uh, is uh, providing about 30% of pollution, uh, and of course 30% is as well is, is, is a transport. So, uh, and big part of this is actually the public transport, especially the buses, no, because of course obviously the tram and trolley bus it doesn't uh, it works on electricity. We really hope that at least in this position we, can, uh, we, we will find a solution in next year. Do I believe that we could, let's say, um, start the entrance fee in the city or say there's, this will be a city with, uh, without the diesel uh, uh, cars and so on? No, we are not ready for, for, for that kind of uh, solutions. But this is not asked by the climate neutrality uh, project. 
Well, the first thing they ask to do is actually they say, okay, find one region in city, one like say micro region or area, and one city, the center of the or historical center of city, and make this place as a climate neutral, and then uh, continue this as, as a role model for and, and implement in all the city. And uh, this is the way we, we see we, we need to move forward step by step, uh, finding new approaches, test them, uh, and continue. Um, I know that I, I, last time when I was in Oslo, I, I saw that half of the cars driving in the city are electric cars, and I said, well, this is, of course, something I would like to see in, in, in Riga, but I, I do believe that this is quite challenging for us, uh, let's say, next at least five years. Thank you. Uh, we also can see that the e-mobility sales, of course, increase because of the mindset of the people. In uh, Riga city especially, it's pretty special because we have about one third of Latvian population living in our capital, which is not uh, typical very much in Europe. So uh, many people live in those uh, apartment houses and in uh, the rural areas. So the question I have, uh, as a second question to you, I have, have you uh, thought about plans of uh, charging infrastructure and so-called low chargers up to 22 kilowatts, for example, in those areas, so-called sleeping areas? And also, uh, just in addition, uh, have you thought about uh, discussions with parking partners, such as um, companies who have main uh, contracts with Riga City, that at least up to 10%, they would have this e-charge possibilities. We have some research we've looked at uh, where it shows that 80% of uh, customers who have e-mobility cars, uh, they charge while they are at home. And I know it from my experience. So have you, have you discussed that, the infrastructure in city? Well, the territory and building regulations uh, determines that this installation of, of individual electric um, charging uh, uh, points is allowed in all the territory in, in city. Uh, so there's no restrictions, uh, maybe some of uh, when there's a regulatory en 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 enactment. But uh, in this uh, territory and building uh, plan, uh, we are in a stage that there's a requirement of the charging point shall be installed in, in all the public places, at least where the 100 uh, cars uh, uh, storage areas, where 100 or more parking lots uh, should be the adequate power supply infrastructure. And uh, this is, um, of course, new, something new for Riga. And we, uh, I, I can't say we already had a very concrete plan how we will move forward, but at least on a, on, on a paper it was written that it should, we should move uh, toward this, uh, uh, this uh, direction. So Riga City Council, no, the development department who is responsible for that has drawn the guidelines uh, how to move on uh, with this uh, project, implementing the charging points, and uh, the work is in, 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 in progress. Uh, that's what uh, I can commend the status for now. And of course, uh, the one, I wouldn't say the biggest plan of climate neutral city, but one of the, the points is the, the to reduce the uh, numbers of the gasoline cars and, and uh, switch them to electrical cars. But I shall say that uh, if you look on our climate natural problems, then actually it's not the biggest uh, uh, issue uh, what will solve the problem. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ilza. Now we will move on to our next panelist, Alexis Carlsons, who is the Managing Director of Omnium Properties. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you. And I'm also uh, representing the uh, Riga Historical um, uh, Building uh, Society. Um, so I think as the previous speakers have said, um, in the real estate sector and in the specific niche sector of historical properties, the number one thing um, that is important for development is predictability and, uh, and, uh, and um, not too much bureaucracy. And uh, uh, Mayor Stakis, uh, we are very happy to see that already uh, your administration is taking uh, steps to uh, correct um, uh, mistakes which the previous administration had made 
and had caused a lot of har harm to historical um, property tenants and, uh, and developers. Uh, so this is a very uh, 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 positive beginning from uh, historical property developers uh, perspective. Um, of course, you are, you are the mayor of uh, a city that is much larger than the historical center. But um, the historical center is not only important for our um, own heritage, uh, but it is important for Regans, uh, not only those who live in the historical center, but it is important for, for everyone in Latvia as a destination to come and enjoy with their families. And of course, um, it, is an, uh, it remains an important business center. And of course, without the historical center, um, really the Latvian tourism industry uh, would not exist. So historical preservation um, uh, is in the interest of, of many different uh, parties. Um, historical properties, generally the challenge is, um, we have overall economic challenges, but in general, historical properties cost about one and a half to two times more to renovate and to maintain um, than uh, a new build. So uh, be, that's because of technical uh, specifications, because of the old properties, and also because of regulations which are implemented by the city and the state. So uh, what is very important for us to understand how the city historical center will continue developing is uh, is is what programs um, the city council plans to uh, propose and foster to stimulate uh, the rejuvenation of historical properties taking into account um, that they are uh, additional restrictions are placed on them and that they have certain uh, economic uh, disadvantages so my uh, initial uh, qu uh, question would be, um, can you, uh, can you uh, give an overview? We obviously understand there are tight budgetary uh, requirements, but what is your view on uh, taxes with respect to historical properties, property taxes? To date, uh, historical prop Riga City Council has always provided tax breaks um, for historical properties, which have been very important for developers and for tenants, um, uh, residential tenants as well. Um, and uh, what are there? What are your? Are there any plans with regards to programs to stimulate, say, uh, the restoration of roofs and facades? In the previous administration, one actually very effective mechanism that they did implement were um, were tax breaks and co-financing programs for things like restoring a facade, adding lighting, and whatnot. And I think if anyone walks around. Uh, Riga today, we can see the positive effects of these uh, of these programs. So, uh, so, so I think so I think Mayor Alex is saying historic buildings they're expensive to maintain, expensive to renovate. What will the city do to preserve these tourist attractions? Will you reduce taxes on these buildings? Will you offer other forms of support? What is your plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you that you have noticed that uh, one huge mistake what was done by previous administration has been solved in the 12th of November and been starting from the 1st of January. Uh, this will be uh, uh, this uh, uh, amendments in, in the binary regulation shall enter in the force. Uh, but the, the social, the, the tax system from, from, uh, for, for Riga well, was always linked uh, or or, or these credits uh, was based on situ situ uh, social situation of the taxpayer, that's one, and of course the also criteria is uh, specifics of the building. And uh, due to this specification you can um, get the, uh, the credit uh, sum up to 90 percent. Uh, well, do I want to change this? Uh, well, I think it's quite fair uh, regulation. I know that in uh, other cities there's like a 90% discount for everything, but this is not the way Riga should, uh, can, can, can afford. And I think that is also the most, most fair uh, uh, poli policy. But we want to uh, continue this. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, there is the regulation uh, that um, 
uh, this uh, Riga city municipality financing on preservation of the cultural and historical heritage. This was program what was not made by my administration. This was made in, uh, uh, I think, four years ago. And we can see the results of this uh, program. And we, we plan to continue this program. The, the beneficiaries of this co-funding are the owners of the cultural and historical construction heritage. Uh, and this plan, on, uh, plan of total funding is 1.4 million uh, also for the, for the next year. Is it enough? Well, there always could be more, but uh, uh, only 50% are covered by the municipality, other 15% is usually covered by the owner, and there are not so many owners also who, can, who are ready to invest those 50%. So for now, we see that this 1.4 million at least is, uh, is th something to start with. Uh, this um, taxes uh, reduction, or the, the, the uh, I think you know them very well. These tax credits granted are up to 90%. Uh, for, for some buildings, uh, are 25 if it's state protected cultural monument. For some, like uh, wooden buildings, uh, which are completely restored and decorative lightings on the facade has been built, are 90%. Is it enough or, or no? Uh, we are open to discuss this uh, issue. There's a new commission has been uh, established uh, this uh, week. Uh, the aim of this commission uh, will be to go through the all the uh, this um, property tax uh, levels and percents and to understand uh, what we should develop, what we should maintain, what we should maybe even increase. So I hope this, uh, you will have a chance uh, to, to visit this commission and also tell your opinion, opinion and your experience about that. Uh, and if you see that there should be something really made in, a, in, in another way. So just let me know if you have that such kind of interest and I organize everything. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alex. And now to our next panelist, Santa Rosenkopa of CBRE. Santa. Hello. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, will start it again. Thank you for for possibility to comment uh, on the presentation and city agenda. I'm representing the real estate advisory and services company CBRE Baltics. Uh, to give a snapshot, the company is affiliated to international services and investment firm CBRE. And uh, likewise, our partner, CBRE, we help local and international tenants, as well as developers and investors to deal with various real estate matters. Um, I have two questions. And before that, I would like to give a forward. What we oftentimes tell to the audiences that are less familiar with the real estate development is that the main driving force for why the real estate development pipeline is improving or stagnating is occupiers. This is the main driving force. For example, the office de developer would think twice if and when to start construction if the tenant activity in the market is low. So then we as an advisor to the developer have to analyze what is the vacancies and what is the take up speed of absorbing uh, the vacant space. And uh, during your uh, pitch as the mayor, I was following your narrative. And at that time, you stood apart from other candidates by being able to put Riga in the context of the Baltics and you rightfully pointed out that some of the neighboring cities are doing much better in delivering the office space. But what I would like maybe to add that we need to look who is in the office space and who is securing the occupancy there. And if we look into that, we see that it's not only the local players who is moving from the old stock 
to more modern stock. Almost half of it are new market players. These are global business service centers. What we see in Riga market is that we have a very nice pipeline in the drawers, or are they just by digging the ground? And it's almost 200,000 square meters that can be built by 2023. And what these developers are looking for is that they can fill up this space with the help of the public activities and municipal and country promotion to the new business that will need, need new space, will need new modern space. And partly you already answered the question by saying that your number one priority, personal priority, is the investment agency. What we can add is that this is the best timing. It's the best timing not only to do the reorganization, it's the best timing to promote the city. Uh, we feel and receive signals that second tier cities in the Baltics, and moreover Riga, is highly on agenda for corporate occupiers, uh, thanks to the technological progress which has happened and made the work for the highly skilled workers possible in all parts of the world. Uh, thanks to the high quality of life that Riga can offer, we need to promote that. We need to multiply the success stories that Riga has already proven of being able to deliver. So my question is, the investment agency starts the work in January. Are there any concrete plans already? Are there division, what the city will do, what the uh, country investment agency will do? Are you synergizing your activities? Uh, the second question is related to what these new businesses will be looking for when looking for the space. We have three points in our advisor scorecard, which rates very, very highly when discussing with them. And one of them is public transport. Uh, I think, Santa, but, as we have uh, limited time, I think it would be best if we first let the mayor answer your t first two questions. But I was very interested. Sure. Uh, what, what was uh, remaining, too? The public transport? The three points uh, are public transport, parking availability, and ventilation in the premises. Well, this can be delivered by the private sector when developing a modern space. Uh, COVID has made the ventilation and other technical standards of the buildings much more relevant. But promotion of the city and public transport availability, this is where the public sector needs to come forward and synergize with the private sector. And these are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. And Mayor, if you could limit your answer to about three minutes, it would be great. There's a lot, a lot to address in those three minutes. Okay, I will quite, well, try to be very quick. I, I don't want to compete with the Latvian investment agency. I want, uh, we definitely want to cooperate with them because what we faced in October, they brought us to the city investors from Belarus. And they was, uh, who was ready to just invest in the market and move also talents from, from Belarus to Riga. But there was no capacity to offer them the place to live, like in the garden for the schools, uh, and so on, so on. And this was the signal for me that we need to speed up this investment agency as soon as possible. And, uh, well, on the beginning, uh, I would like to th this be more like a service agency that we can help the new businesses to find the roots here in our city. But, of course, the next step could be that uh, we are going uh, outside Latvia and promoting very actively Riga as a good place for investment, good place to, to live and, and, and work. And this, of course, is my task, and uh, I, I see that it is my responsibility to be the leader of this, of this process. Uh, the role play for us are, are Vilnius, actually. Uh, the mayor of the Vilnius, Senemigius Jemarš, is a good friend of mine, and we are contacting uh, him uh, quite oftenly. Of course, uh, they see us as uh, competitors as well, and it's uh, okay. 
uh, but uh, uh, I, I, th I see that actually the Riga uh, has a much more uh, possibilities in Vilnius because of our airports and so on. So what I learned uh, when I was working in Norwegian companies was that uh, as good is not good. If you are not uh, at least much better than your competitor, then the system doesn't work. So I believe this uh, new agency will be a very continuous uh, process. Uh, but the, big, uh, the beginning, the first uh, thing we, I wanted to do that if Latvian invest, investment agency brought to me the investor and say, okay, there is an investor, take it and stay, uh, let them stay in Riga, that I can do these duties and do this work. Thank you, Mayor. And we'll have some quick fire questions too that were sent in by Slido as we have about seven minutes remaining. Mobility backbone is, is the city development strategy is public transport, not bicycle lanes. Can you comment on that? Shouldn't public transport, buses, trolleys, uh, be more important than bicycle lanes? Yes. Yes, I do. The, 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 the biggest, I think, mistake or challenge in Riga is that the, the, the core of this uh, is, is not a, a railway because we don't use all the possibilities what the railway could, could, could provide us. And the railway system and the municip municipal public transport are living two separate lives. The, we want to merge them together, not in one company, but at least at, at one ticketing system. And uh, this uh, RRF funding, uh, the project, what we, what we write, our requirements, uh, one is the Riga uh, Area uh, Mobility uh, Program uh, to link uh, all the surrounding municipalities in, in, uh, and Riga into the one transporting system. Me, myself, I am from Tukums, so uh, for me the easiest way is go to, to Babite, then leave my car parked in a Pabita in park and ride, and then take a bicycle or train going to the centrum. And uh, to, to, to do that, we need to make a plan together with these uh, surrounding mun municipalities. And that's what we did. At least this is the first project that was, uh, what was made together uh, with the surrounding municipalities. What we will see in February, we will receive some funding for that or not. And the next step what we, uh, with these uh, surrounding municipalities, we want to do our own association and to, 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 to prioritize our needs. And uh, my, my, my strong statement uh, for me, myself, and also for Vice Mayor Edward Miltons is that Riga will cooperate with the uh, surrounding municipalities, not only uh, compete uh, each other, because there are many uh, issues uh, if you talk about the public transport or, or mobility in general, what should be done only together with the surrounding municipalities. And the next two questions we have are about corruption. Uh, why is there always talk about raising taxes when companies like Riga, Satiksme and situations like the Southern Bridge loot hundreds of millions from the city of Riga? Will you go after these people? We did already. There were 70, uh, 77 people, I think, sued uh, to the, and to, to, in order to get the money back. Uh, the Southern Bridge, this is challenging, and uh, this was made very smart, and I don't see the big uh, possibilities to sue some of them. But um, the main task for me is, is not only, of course, to find those bad people who are, who are in, in responsible for that, but actually to create a new system in a municipality and also the companies run by municipality when cor corruption is, is on a zero level. It's, and it starts with, with me, actually myself, with my uh, statement that I want this city free of corruption. I want this municipality free uh, of, uh, of, of corruption. And that's why one of my wise, wise mayors who work with me, Mrs. Linda Wazula, is in charge of that. Uh, she now works on a new plan, fights against the corruption and also good, governments, good governance in, in, a, in a city and in the, in, in the municipal own or, uh, companies. Also, the Norwegian government has given over 13 million euros to support preventing and combating economic crime in Latvia. What specifically will you d do to address and support whistleblowers? 
I think most important is to, to, to show uh, whistleblowers that you are in a safe zone now. Uh, there is a box uh, in, in, in a regional municipality when you can put your letter and say, okay, and, and I have a case, and there's only eight letters, even though we know that there will be the hundred of the cases, and one of the reasons that people are scared. Uh, and uh, my, my, uh, my, my goal is to encourage them not to be scared, and uh, that this is our common target to find uh, against uh, uh, corruption. And... Uh, and, and they, I think that's why this good governance is, is so important. For instance, this a new uh, reorganization of this um, uh, agency who will fight corruption in, in the city will be make will made an e-program, the courses uh, when when every new employee needs to fulfill uh, go these uh, digital courses before he starts. Uh, working, but I think that the, the giving the signals, the whistleblowers, you are in a safe zone, and also get rid of those people who was in the charge of uh, all, uh, all the system is, is very important. Even though it's so complicated uh, to do, because uh, they are people who are uh, used to be working in, in a Uyghur municipality for, for for 20 years. Everybody knows they are responsible for this. Uh, uh, these, these cases, but when you find legal way how to, excuse me, get rid of them, you understand that uh, this social democratic system has uh, made a good job in a regular municipal. They are always in a safe zone, and uh, but we will find a way that, that I can promise to you. Thank you, Mayor Stachis, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule today to come. Uh, talk with us to the members of the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce. I also would like to say not only thank you to you, but thank you to em the ambassador and the Norwegian uh, embassy for their support. We would like to present you. I won't get too close. We would like to present you with the certificate of appreciation, and we wish you good luck in your term as mayor. And if the Norwegian embassy or the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce can ever come and help, uh, we look forward to working together. Thank you so much. And there were some questions what was uh, sent us uh, before this uh, event uh, with what wasn't asked, but we have prepared the, uh, the answers for those questions. So I could then send uh, this version to you and then you can spread it with your uh, members that my, uh, my answer is also in written form. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you everyone for joining us today. And remember, you can always join the Norwegian Chamber of Commerce to increase your contacts in Latvia and in Norway by visiting our website for more information, nccl.lv. Thank you for joining us today, and once again, thank you, Mayor Statius. Thank you so Goodbye. Much. See you next time.